And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hello folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Deduction News. That's what Speech Breaker is here, the voice jamming challenge game, where I'm going to come and give you all the news that's fit to say into a microphone, except I'm going to be hearing in these microphones back what I'm saying, which makes it harder to do. Um, so I kind of just explained the whole game to you, but if you need more, here it is. So in this game, you have a set of cards here, and you're going to have this microphone and headphones. You're going to split everyone into two teams, and whoever's t turn it is is going to put these headphones on. Now, for this game to work well, I'm going to have to put the headphones. By the way, these need three uh, AAA batteries for them for this to work. Uh, I'm going to put these headphones close to the mic so you can kind of get an exp uh, a feeling of how the game plays. By the way, it says, this game is loud, so if it's too loud, then just talk more quietly. So you're going to draw a card from the deck, and this card has four different things on it. So you have a Weatherman DVRing shows in Toronto, a Mushroom Hunter coloring on an assembly line, a substitute teacher hosting a telethon on a glacier, and Nicolas Cage adapting a kitten in a convertible. So uh, I'll pick substitute teacher. So what you're going to do when this happens is you're going to press this button here and it's going to play a song and then you have to give clues to your team for 30 seconds hearing your voice repeated after you really loudly in your ears. And you can, you're just going to try to guess them to guess who, what, and, and where. So it might sound a little bit like this. Okay, so... Um, so first of all, we're talking about someone in a classroom. When the main person in that classroom is sick, this person comes in and takes over for them. And this person is helping Jerry's kids by making people answer their phones and give money. And they're doing this on a big slate of ice that's usually found up north. This is an amazing story. And um, so once again, we're talking about a teacher. Okay, so when you hear that foot, and actually I said teacher, I'm not supposed to do that. I don't know why I did that at the very end there. Um, but uh, then your team has basically, they have to guess what it is. So the, hopefully they'll say, it's a substitute teacher hosting a telethon on a glacier. If they're right, you get to keep the card, and you can argue whether if they're close enough or not, and then you just go to the next person. Once every player has done this three times, whichever team has the most cards is the winner of the game. So mostly the game is all about these cards. Lawyer, stuffing a teddy bear in a sound booth, environmentalist, levitating in a chicken coop. Here's what just totally blows my mind. These are basically three random things. A bowler editing a paper in an intersection. So why wouldn't you have three decks of cards and you draw a who, a what, and a where? Instead of having them preset, the bowler is always going to be editing a paper on the intersection. But why can't the bowler, you know, be making seltzer and a doggy daycare you know just I, I i don't know and as usual the cards are not very good quality they have these corners that are going to get beat up there is a little box that you're able to put all of them in which is good because this piece of garbage box is going to fall apart in a second the microphone and the headphones are okay quality i have a big giant melon of a head and they do fit fine on me All right, let's see if I can get my final thoughts while doing this for real. Okay, so the problem is, it's obviously, I can't explain to you how hard it is because your voice is really loud into your ears. And so you're constantly hearing that, which is gonna throw off your concentration. The same as if someone next to you is just shouting into your ears, blah, 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 blah. And that's gonna throw you off. And so that's the whole point of the game. Like I said, there's no reason there should have been three decks of cards and mixing those things up. That just seems really odd. Um, and also, as funny as this is, it gets old really, really quickly. It really does. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. I have a hard time hearing. It's not fun to do that. It's not even fun for people to watch you because they don't really know. They might see you lose your concentration some. All it does is it slows you down in giving out clues. There's a lot of funny party games that, you know, funny things are happening and you are doing them 
and maybe you have to, you know, even that really idiotic game where you're around and like this and you talk, it's funny for people to watch. This one is not really funny for people to watch you. It's only like an exercise. Think of it the same way as I have to pat my head the whole time I'm talking and I can't stop and I got to rub my stomach or I got to hop on one foot. It's that kind of thing. I'm mentally trying to tune out what's in my ears and just give clues to people. That, and then they don't really give you a strong, this is how the clues should work. You know, you can say this, you can't use part of the words. I don't, this just feels like someone said, hey, here's a funny device. It feeds back in your ears. And they're like, ah, let's make a party game about that. Quick, Bob, write some cards up. Bob, I got some cards up. Quick, package this in a cheap box. Quick, everyone buy it. Quick, forget about it. Because that is what you should do. Dice Tower Judgment, interesting for about a minute.